as well as the peaks, because the peaks show you how much Windows will try and steal from all of the other operating systems on your storage array, right? and the area underneath the graph is what you need to eventually serve before the process will finish. So total I.O. consumed, 300,000, so that's three times as many, so 15 times as many as big. Peak read 7,000, peak write 3,500, time taken 16 minutes. That's Probably that scan on your laptop would have taken you know, maybe an hour, 45 minutes. But because we have enough apps provided to the Windows 7 VM, it only took 16 minutes. So because I did one antivirus, I thought I might as well test another one. Microsoft Security Essentials, excellent. <laughs> Again, scale goes up to 8,000. So it's still pretty beaky. I always kind of think of sort of Windows 7 storage, so you can actually see when you're doing absolutely nothing, periods of 0, 0, 0, 0, and no apps. But as soon as you start to do something, it goes mad. It's like, uh, what does somebody say about um, being a soldier? Large periods of boredom followed by periods of intense activity, intense terror. As I look at the sort of IOP machine, so it was 300,000 for a Vera, 850,000 for security centers. 26 minutes. So it appears to be quite important which antivirus <laughs> solution you choose. Because in my head, I was like, oh, we probably the same, they just scan each file, don't they? Yeah. Well, they obviously work in slightly different ways. So just for fun, let's see if that's where I have to pay user how long an AV scan would take. That is 12 hours. So <clears throat> you can see that you really do need to plan for this kind of unusual activity. And by unusual activity, I mean normal stuff. <laughs> because all right, you know, this is an AV scan and I knew before I tested it that it would be intense. I had no idea it would be this bad. So have you any idea exactly what the IAPS profile of all the applications in your estate are? No, nobody will. But if you've got applications that are really chatty to storage, you could have a huge amount of IAPS being generated by just one application. And this is what I was talking about before, about being able to look at those peaks and seeing exactly what's going, what process is happening. Maybe you just need a slight app compact change to your application and your whole VDI state will run a lot better. Maybe you just um, say, oh, actually, you know what, I'm going to deliver that app over terminal services or Zen app or whatever you like, just to make sure that you don't get that stupid peak of activity in the middle of your day. So have a look at log off. As you would expect, it's a much more write intensive um, process than logging on. But compared to what we've seen before, it's only peaking up to, um, to 100. And shut down, peaking up to about 450. So if we take a look at the whole lot, so <clears throat> I couldn't do it in one graph because I needed the horizontal scale to squish and, and go up to make it click. But the vertical scale here is absolutely bang on. So, <clears throat> day in the life of Windows 7 IO. You've got your boot time, your agent start, you can't see your, your um, pre -log on, log on, it's your VSI, your steady state, your two AV scans, and you can hardly see the log off and, and shut down graphs. To be fair though, you'd never run two AVs. To be fair, I would never run two AVs on one Windows 7 OS, yes. I might watch a movie though. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Large, large amounts of high death porn. <laughs> Thank you, Alex, wherever he is. <laughs> so, 
You go and not going to watch this, is it? With the admission now on the show <laughs> that you watch large amounts of high to, quality porn. To get my girlfriend to watch my presentation on IELTS would require us. Girlfriend version 2. You know she'll find it. So, solutions. Now, these are kind of really scary numbers and really scary graphs. And I was astounded when I saw them. So I hadn't actually realized the, the scale of the problem. But a well-planned VDI estate should be able to cope with these decisions. You can pre you can optimize, and you can bring in all of the stuff that you now know and from you know, Project VRC and all kinds of other resources that you can plan correctly. And if you plan correctly, you're going to be all right. And in fact, if you plan correctly, you can give, make sure that you give users a performance boost when they're running video. Yeah? Because that's always nice, isn't it? When you've got a new solution and your users come on and go, it's really fast. This is so cool. Because that's what you want. The user acceptance is key. And if you plan correctly, you can get that sort of snappiness and response from the OS. So the solutions that are available to you depend on whether you're doing stateless or system desktops. These solutions will work for both. Traditional disks, yeah, if you chuck enough spindles at the problem, you will be okay. But virtualization is meant to solve that, it's meant to take stuff out of your data center. And you just introduce racks and racks of stuff that requires enormous amounts of space, power, and cooling. So perhaps not the best solution. Sign with SSD. So this is either sign with a big SSD cache on the front end, or um, a highly sound that can move workloads that are IO intensive up and down. Slightly work. Um, <clears throat> even with that steady state, most of it is right IOS. Yeah. And to make writes quick. What you need to do is have a large open space on your cache, so a large empty space to write into. If you're waiting for your cache to flush, then you're not going to have very good write performance. And the cache has to flush to the spindles, because it's not where the data is going to end up. So if your average IAPS consumed for your estate is greater than is possible for the spindles, your cache is going to get overwhelmed and fail. So you have to be very careful when you're looking at the, the cache standard stuff. You can get SSD appliances. The reason these are different is because the data is actually stored on the SSD. They're not using it as a cache. So you can get a shared appliance for SSD. Very fast. And be careful with your space. So perhaps using um, stateless, so using link clones or PBS or MCS would be a much better option here than using system. Otherwise, you won't be able to afford the storage. There are solutions in software, and um, I work for one of them. These solutions are only any good for stateless. You get PCI, PCIe cards, which rely on uh, multiple SSDs on a PCIe card, and they use the, the PCI bus instead of the SAS bus to get really good performance. Um, local SSD. Yeah, maybe not for a virtualization platform. I love them in laptops, but you know, you're only talking five to ten thousand. You're only talking five to ten thousand IELTS for an SSD, and whether you've got enough space to fill, to put in your server or your blades to get the capacity or the performance you need, that depends on your workload and the size of your servers. So There's a possible solution, but you have to look carefully at it. It is a, it is a commercial advantage sometimes to have local versus SAN SSD. The local SSD will cost you fourteen hundred quid. Yeah. Uh, SAN SSD, you're looking at about nine grand. Yeah, is, is, that, is that kind of difference? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, of course, to take advantage of that, you have to do stateless. So, lots of engineering time. Yeah. Okay. There's no be motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <coughs> with thirty seconds to go, conclusion: measure your IOPS. Take what I've said today and see what is happening out there on your infrastructure. If you're going to do some VDI for developers, 
have a look what their steady state is, what they actually need. Do not go and trust any vendor when they say, you need this much. Go and measure it for yourself, because then you'll know your size correctly. Choose the right model for deployment, whether it's stateless or system. And make, make, it <coughs> make that decision quite early, because it absolutely affects the architecture legal need all the way down the line. And then you can pick the right storage solution, you can pick all the other bits and bobs for it. Once you've done that, you've measured it, and you've got the right, well, you've got the right solution. And there are other solutions out there to solve it. Then you have solved your IOPS issue. And you will have a nice performant VDI infrastructure, and all of your users, and your CIO, and your CTO will look it. So, that's it. Thanks very much, guys.